Mr. David Brin. I'm about to take your soul, homie. So Mr. David Brin is a decently renowned scientist and futurist who I would describe as a typical neoliberal. Matter of fact, for being a scientist and a futurist, it's pretty pathetic, some of these beliefs that he has. He has a lot of this whole Russia phobia stuff. Um, I, I used to have that to a degree as well back when Trump when Trump uh, was running against uh, Hillary Clinton. But that was in like 2015. You know, there's a lot of stuff that came out <clears throat> that showed that um, Russia didn't have that much of an impact on our elections. So it's just like typical neoliberal excuses for having such a shitty candidate. So Mr. Brin recently challenged me to refute his counterpoints to uh, the progressive left who complains about the state of the Democratic Party. And um, I'm going to, I just jotted down some quick notes right here. I can't exactly um, directly quote his his blog post because um, I'm recording and this device is my only my only internet source. So I just wrote some, you know, quick summary of his five points, his five talking points to uh, use against progressives. Um, <clears throat> but before I get into that, I just want to say how, how I came across this man. Um, I watch a scientist on uh, YouTube, another scientist and futurist named John Michael Godier, which I have a lot of respect for. And um, he, he, he recently interviewed David Brin, right? Now, I went to the comments section right when I clicked the video, and everybody in the comments was ragging on this guy, right? Like, I've never seen anybody rag on, on one of uh, John Michael Godier's guests like that, right? And my first thought is like, okay, what's going on? These people are, are bugging out. They're wilding out, you know. They, they can't be, they can't be, uh, right? But I fell asleep. You know, I usually watch his videos late at night and I fell asleep before I really got to hear more than eight minutes. And he seemed a little pompous, but I like that. You know, I'm pompous myself. And um, Dave, David, Mr. David, um, I am from the inner city. So I ask you to not be offended by my um, by the way I word things, my tonality. Um, you did win a, a prize for free speech. Right. So. You know, I'm, <laughs> everything I say is in jest, but I'm going to murk you, bro. So I'm on Facebook and I don't know how, but his David Brin's um, Facebook page comes up and I, you know, I, I see some his one of his posts, recent posts that he's just berating, he's berating the the so-called far left. He's berating leftists. He's berating millennials. You know, basically, um, boomers explaining to the younger generations that we gotta, you know, fall in line and yada yada yada. The typical shit that we always hear. Um, I've got I've got these five points of his right here, and um, let's just get into it. I'm gonna refute them now. All my um, counterpoints, his counterpoints, I'm not going to have too much detail, which doesn't really matter because he didn't really provide too much detail. But if if you really want to go, because you said you'd wager on it, we can go, you know, and you can you can use you can destroy me and we can use that as an example. You can use me. You can use me as a proxy for all my uh fellow leftist millennials but um i don't i don't think you will, i don't think you can you can handle the heat mr david mr brin mr brin's uh, blog post which i'm going to link in the comments is called five devastating rebuttals to use with our worst allies the mad ones who would split our coalition his first point is about how Obama did so much stuff, right? How Obama was, uh, what was it, one of the most productive, uh, most productive administrations in decades, right? It's not saying much. Our country has been stagnating since the boomers have been in control. And you are one of those, Mr. Brin. Now, he said, number one, 
Number one is is basically the majority, the the, the largest portion of his uh, whole blog post is this number one point. Um, so we'll go down the list of number one. He champ David Brin champions the Affordable Care Act as one of as a great accomplishment that Obama did. The Affordable Care Act is based off of Romney Care. It's essentially a Republican health care plan. Um, there's not even a public option in it. Uh, what's the point? What's the point of the Affordable Care Act if insulin is through the roof? If medicine is through the roof? If even today, well after Obama's out of office, people go to Canada to get cheaper health care. So a, a fucking flight to Canada is and buying medicine in Canada with cash is cheaper than paying for your medicine here with the Affordable Health Care Act. Come on. Come on. Pre-existing conditions. That's cool. Yeah. Now people with pre-existing conditions get to get to uh, can't be denied health care. Um, so what? If you, if you don't have the money to pay for it, you can't pay for it, even if you have pre-existing conditions. Healthcare is ridiculously expensive. Our healthcare is like the most embarrassing healthcare system in the whole, in the whole, in any first world nation. So, okay, Affordable Healthcare Act, people with pre-existing conditions can, can, can also go bankrupt now, you know, okay. Next point, he says, um, Bank regulations. Obama passed some bank regulations and created the Consumer Financial Protection Agency. I warn all my friends nowadays that these banks are out of control with their scams now. Um, there's so many new companies that are selling like these shitty ass debit cards with like crazy like like rates and they charge you all these like these um these fees. You don't earn interest on them. Um, um, it seems to me like like there's there's more there's less regulation than ever. Like we're getting we're getting we're getting cards mailed to us with our names on them and saying you're pre-approved for this. Deposit money on here. Um, deposit your money from your check. Get paid up to two days earlier. And the cards themselves look really cute and shit, but they offer worse worse protections and worse benefits than a regular bank. Um, in your era, Mr. Bryn, in your era, bank regulations, in your era, you guys got better deals, man. You guys had better credit. And what bank regulations, like... So, like, it's kind of ridiculous because now there's... Everything is more automated in the banking industry yet they're charging more for processing fees. If we were really being protected with by these like consumer financial protections and stuff, um, there would be, the processing fees would be cheaper just because there's no humans doing it anymore. And there's, it, it, it's it's cheaper due to technology, like, but we're, we're getting charged more for processing fees than ever. It's like, it doesn't make sense. So that's not even a win for you guys. Let's see. Next, he says uh, Obama passed some uh, stuff that that improved gas mileage for cars and stuff. Yeah, that's cool and all. That is cool and all, but um, that's like does nothing for climate change. It does nothing when gas is super expensive. It's like a slight trivial win, sure. Most the the most impoverished among us don't even have cars. Same thing for his next point. He said that there's a solar and wind takeoff, takeoff, like there's solar and wind everywhere. I mean, most of the people who can afford solar and wind are fairly well off and they're neoliberals like yourself, Mr. Bryn. Um, you know, I've seen I've seen solar solar panels in the ghetto and they'll like stick a solar panel on a stop sign. And the stop sign will flash little red lights. And I just wondered to myself, like, how how much did that fucking solar panel cost? This fucking stop sign. Like, that money could have been used way better. Like, you're just benefiting some rich guy in some solar company. That shit is not real. It's 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 like um 
it's like virtual signaling with green energy. So now he says, Wall Street overhauls after the financial crisis of 2008. Obama did some great Wall Street overhauls. I'm like, bitch, where? Bitch, where? Where? Wall Street right now is still just as shitty as they ever were. They're fucking abusing us. Stimulus package. He gave them 700 billion plus stimulus package. Wall Street received that stimulus package. We didn't get shit out of that. Come on, man. He says, Obama repealed, don't ask, don't tell. He didn't codify gay marriage into law. Didn't codify abortion into law. And that was intentional. That was intentional so that it wouldn't be protected, so that Republicans could put it at risk in the future, so that they can use the same fucking thing again to get you to vote for them. This abortion shit should have not been, should have not even been like an issue right now in 2022. And people have been talking about, oh, the Republicans are going to get rid of gay marriage and whatnot. That's because Obama didn't codify it. That was planned like that. They want to do the ping pong. They want you to, they want to just fight on social issues because generally speaking, Republicans and Democrats are pretty much aligned on, on uh, economics. Um, now his second point, he says, we've had a wave of legislation in blue states. And he's like, um, he's basically saying that, uh, we call them, we call the democratic party corporate, corporate sellouts. And he uses California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, New York as examples of bulwarks against Trumpism. And I'd argue the opposite. I'd argue that those same states, the major cities in those states, which I, I'm from New Jersey and I spent a year in Manhattan. I am from a deep blue place, deep, large city. Um, our cities are in shambles. Our cities that are run under Democrat leadership are in shambles. There's high crime, high rents, lots of homelessness. Trump supporters use our cities as a rallying call to motivate their people to go out and vote. They say, oh, look how, look how bad their cities are happening. This is going to happen to us if we don't do our, our MAGA shit, you know? So, come on. You can't use California and New York as, a, as, a, as like paragons of, 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 uh, of progressivism. Like, you see all the damn homeless people over there? Come on. It's fucking out of control. Chicago's out of control. Lori Lightfoot's not doing shit. She might look like a Ninja Turtle, but she's not fighting crime, bro. Come on. Now, we've got he, his, his third point. It says we have 29 consensus goals that all that all the Democrat, all the Democratic leadership have. That's a lot to address right now. I was just writing everything down. I'm like responding very quickly after I saw his 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 response to me or whatever. But I, I'm, I just picked out five of these consensus goals, which, by the way, in his consensus goals that the 20, the 29 consensus goals that all Democratic leaders have share, there's no $15 minimum wage in, in their consensus goals that he wrote. There's no legalization federally of marijuana. There's no there's nothing to do with with uh, universal health care or universal free college. But here's some of his points that I saw that I was like, this is ridiculous because Democrats don't even support this, the leadership. Whistleblower protections. Whistleblower protections. You're telling me that Democratic leaders believe in whistleblower protections? Yo, Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange, reality winner. Come on, man. Obama was locking up whistleblowers left and right. What are you talking about? Let's see. Protect women autonomy. Like I said, we did not, we did not code, we did not codify abortion into law. Net neutrality. Net neutrality was destroyed under Obama. All right. He he didn't really fight against it. You know, he might have he might have said one or two sentences in an interview. But if somebody who fights for stuff, if if they're if they're if they're if if uh, Congress is going to pass an anti net neutrality law, and and you're a president, and if you're going to fight against it, you can't just say like, oh, you know, we can't do this, we can't do this. You have to fight for it. You have to fight against it. You have to fight against it as hard as you can. And they don't. He doesn't use. The, he didn't use the bully pulpit to protect net neutrality because net neutrality doesn't exist anymore. 
Children out of cages. Bro. Yo soy dominicano. So I have to like, I talk about this one specifically. Obama, Obama uh, deported more, more Hispanics than George Bush did. And child deportations continue under Biden. A lot of those places that you guys are complaining about Trump putting all these kids in cages, they're still there. They're still there. So that's, that's just empty platitudes, man. Because now that Biden is president, we don't talk about that no more. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't go visit those, uh, we don't go visit those detention centers anymore. Why not? Go over there. They're still fucking there. This one's hilarious. Antitrust, breaking up the monopolies. Bitch, where? They're all still there. Not a single monopoly has been broken. Antitrust, corporations have consolidated more power than ever now. And it wasn't just under Trump. It continues now under Biden. It continued well throughout Obama. Because when the, when, the, when the economy crashed in 2008, that was in the very beginning of Obama's term. And he had two terms. So he had, he had eight years. Where was the, what, company, what company was charged under these antitrust laws? Come on, man. So those are just a few points of his 29 consensus goals, which are point three. Like the, the goals that he that he wrote, they don't even follow them. But anyways, let's go. He said third parties this is point four. Third parties should only campaign in deep blue states. Right. Um, there's been so many cases of third party candidates or independent candidates who are on the left, who are progressives, they reach thresholds of signatures required and they get kicked off the ballot by Democrats because Democrats and Republicans control, control the, um, control who gets on to the ballots and who doesn't. So it's like, come on. That's that's like that's like a it's it's such bullshit, because even when we try to only to only campaign in safe blue states, the safe blue regions, Democrats still fight against it. Now, point number five, he says that moderate Democrats, not populist Democrats, can win in red states, and he uses Amy McGrath as an example. Amy who? Amy who? I don't see nobody named Amy McGrath. In the House of Representatives or in the Senate, uh, you know, it's funny because um, every time they say that a moderate Democrat, which is really a conservative, that a moderate Democrat could win in in uh, red areas, they never do. And the people who do win in red areas are populists who are for the people and come in with progressive policies, but speak from a working class point of view. So, um, Mr. Bryn, you've said yourself, when you have a monopoly or a duopoly, you start getting incestuous behavior. That's what we have now. You want us to fall in line, right? And you you say, it, on, the, on the post that you responded to me on our Facebook, um, you're like, oh, we're responsible for for Democrats losing in all these years. You went back from like the 70s to now. And you're like, oh, when we lose in 2022, it's because of us and this and that. Dude, Joe Biden can barely speak and he hasn't done shit for us. So it's because of people like you that we're going to lose to the right wing. It's because of comfortable people like you. You're very comfortable. You just, you just, you want... You want, you give platitudes. You want things to be as they are, you know? Like I said, right now, they say that the older you get, the more conservative you get. And that's probably true for you guys, for boomers, because you guys already have a pretty decent lifestyle. But really, what have you guys done in your whole generation? Your parents were the ones who built the highway system. Your parents were the ones who fought for the civil rights. What have you guys done? You guys haven't done shit, man. You guys let the cities fall apart. You guys let you guys let Bush go to war. You guys let Obama go to war. You guys let this military industrial complex grow. Uh, you guys let China just totally take control of all our supplies, our supply chains. 
the boomer generation has been the most selfish and effective generation in the last 100 years. What protests have you guys done? You guys had good jobs, good cushy jobs. You guys experienced the whole, the, all the profits from um, the, the, the technological age. And the worst thing is, right when my generation became adults, the economy crashed. And now, right when Zoomers, when the generation under us is becoming adults, the economy's crashing again. We need radical, we need radical change. And you're not providing that. You want this incremental shit, which causes people to believe, to, to lose faith in the system. Um, your shitty policies aren't going to get people to go out and vote. Like, you know that these policies are super popular on both sides. Everybody wants a higher minimum wage. Everybody wants universal health care. The majority of America wants decriminalization, legalization of many different drugs. The thing is, you guys are comfortable. Your life is pretty much over. You guys already, you know, you just want to maintain what you have. You have your homes. You have your social security. You just want that feel good stuff, but you don't really want any substantive change because you don't need it. You don't need it. We're out here dying, man. We're falling apart. It's like jobs are shittier than ever. They're paying less than ever. Inflation is through the roof. Inflation might irritate you, but it hurts us. You don't really care. You just want these platitudes. So, in summation, Mr. Bryn. <clears throat> It's, it's people like you who are hurting the party. It's people like you who are hurting the left. It's people like you who are hurting Democrats. If Republicans win, which they will, they're going to take the House and possibly the Senate. And if they do, it's because of you guys. It's because you guys offer nothing to the people. People don't even want to vote anymore because you guys offer nothing, man. It's pathetic, honestly. And then, and then you chastise us. You know, most Bernie voters voted for Hillary Clinton, and you still chastise us about it. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. It's gaslighting. It's gaslighting. I don't know if you guys do that to your wives and your children, but you're not going to do it to me. I don't forget. I don't forget. I don't let shit go. So I voted for Hillary, and I didn't want to. I voted for Biden, and I didn't want to. I always do what the fuck you guys ask, despite not wanting to despite knowing it's not going to work how you guys think it's going to work. Now, this is the problem. I might vote for that shitty neoliberal candidate in 2024, but there's no way my peers will. They'll just stay out of the election process. And I think, honestly, that's what the Democrats want. So that's my quick rebuttal. I It, it was a little, it was a little uh, impromptu, so pardon the sloppiness. But um, if you really do, if you really do want to get into it, Mr. Bryn, uh, I'll, go on, I'll go on any platform of your choice with any referee of your choice, and we can have a virtual debate. I doubt you'll take up on that offer, because you know, you guys, uh, you boomers are, are kind of cowardly. Like I said, you guys didn't really do anything in the last 60 years. So, I mean, maybe you'll prove me wrong. Maybe you maybe you have some, maybe you are you are a lion. Maybe you are a lion. Maybe you do have some courage. I don't know. Obviously, you guys have no courage against Republicans. You only, you only get tough when it's against your own party, against the, the progressives in your party. But, um... There's there's my my reputation of your reputation. Have a good day.